good looking crowd. Man, it is too hot to be a furry, right? We got any furries in here? Any? Yeah, one or two? All right. Any children? I need to explain what a furry is. Furry is those people who dress up in the animal mascot costumes and have sex, right? Makes sense to me. I like stuffed animals and having sex. I just never thought of combining the two. I sweat enough during regular sex. You put me in a walrus costume, I'm having a stroke. So, be here. Yeah, so far, this is way better than a gig I had at a nursing home in Compton. Uh, I did comedy at a nursing home in Compton. I'm not saying it was a bad show, but a guy in a wheelchair got up and walked out. Right, so it was, uh... It's been a rough couple years for people who spit when they talk, right? You know? Anyone else noticing spittle a lot more? Yeah. You spit when you talk, I'm not even listening. Like, I, I just start calculating the trajectory. Remember when we were kids? If someone spit when they talked, what would we say? There it is. Say it, don't spray it. Right? Say it, don't spray it. I want the news, not a weather report. You remember that? And then we got rid of bullying. And now we have a two-year global pandemic of an airborne virus, right? Actions have consequences. You ever been joking with someone about watching weird porn and then you realize they're not joking? Which, really quick, can we quit it with this whole liking stuff in your butt makes you gay, right? <laughs> liking men makes you gay. Liking stuff in your butt just makes you fun. What's happening? Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, Florida, they just passed this don't say gay bill, which I thought I supported. I was like, all right, I'll stop saying it. But uh, <laughs> then my liberal friend was like, no, it's the it's the Republicans who don't want you to say gay. The Democrats want you to say gay. And I said, is this a trap? <laughs> I'll say it. I'm an ally. I will keep saying it. <laughs> My girlfriend has a weight problem. She can't wait to fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, buddy, up top, woo, huh? All right, yeah, woo! But yeah, I used to be a professional boxer. I, uh, I graduated from UCLA School of Theater. All right. Then I became a professional boxer. Because yeah. I figured, you know, let's keep making terrible career choices, right? Like, why stop? Why stop it majoring in theater? Let's put some brain damage on that resume. Which is why I'm doing this, right? Is why I'm here tonight. I'm a former professional boxer with a degree in theater. Wow. Not a lot of employers looking for left hooks and jazz hands, right? So. Wow. <laughs> but a lot of people think boxers are stupid. And those people are just absolutely correct. Right? Uh, we got any boxing fans in here? Any, a couple? All right, you can back me up on this, okay? Here's how dumb boxers are. You ever notice that boxing is the only sport in which the participants before every match need to be reminded of the rules. <laughs> like every fight, they come to the center of the ring and the referee's like, okay, don't hit below the belt. Uh, in case of a knockdown, go to a neutral corner, protect yourself at all times, because that wasn't obvious, right? Here's the worst part. The referee always starts out by saying, okay, I gave you your instructions in the dressing room. This is the second time! Wow. 
Uh, I hate that white tank tops are called wife beaters. <laughs> my dad wore one every day of his life and he never married my mother. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Uh, fourth grade, I got into a fight with a kid named Kareem Jackson. Kareem had been picking on me because I was short and white and he was poor and not white. Them's the rules. I was, uh, I was always like the second shortest kid in class. It was me and then the kid who was obviously born premature. And that day I was playing one-on-one -on -one basketball with this preemie named James. And it was just, it was nice being up a kid shorter than me with underdeveloped lungs. And then Kareem came over and he said he wanted to play. I knew he didn't want to play. He was just trying to get on my nerves. So I said no. And then he tried to punch the basketball out of my hands. I said no again. He went to punch the basketball. He missed. He punched me in the stomach. And that's just when I heard my dad's voice saying, first punch, right to the nose. That's what I did. First punch, right to the nose. Gave him a bloody nose, made his afro jiggle. Because my dad... <laughs> My dad always said first punch right to the nose when he was sober. Uh, when he'd been drinking, he showed me how to take someone down from behind so that their body weight crushed their windpipe and they couldn't scream. Anyone else raised by a Vietnam vet? No one else raised by Vietnam vets? No? A couple of you? I am a Vietnam vet. All right, thank you. Yeah, the rest of you spoiled brats could go near your dad when he was sleeping. All right. <laughs> you see this Arby's commercial? Where at the end they say, Arby's, we have the meats. And then the chef pops up and he says, for sandwiches. Who's fucking confused? <laughs> Arby's has meat for. <laughs> Halloween has got to be the most confusing night of the year for a guy who's trying to pick up a hooker, right? <laughs> I guess. It's like, hey, babe, how much? Ooh, I'm not a prostitute. Well, you're not a nurse either. All right. <laughs> All right, I'll end with this. I, uh, I knew it was time for me to stop fighting when my brain started to agree with the guy who just hit me. Uh, yeah, you get smacked in the mouth and the voice in your head's like, yeah, that was a good one. Time to start thinking about a different career. I fought this guy named Joey Aragon, and I had never been hit so hard in all my life. Like, every shot he threw made me think, I could be an accountant. <laughs> And Joey brought his kids to the fight. That's where he, remember, he had two daughters and a son. They were all under 10 years old. They're sitting ringside, okay? Right next to the ring. That's what ringside means. And uh, <laughs> halfway into the first round, Joey knocked me down. Now, not many people have experienced this, so let me tell you. You have not lived until you've been a grown man getting beat up to the sound of kids cheering. It is... <laughs> One of the most humiliating experiences. But I came back, I won the fight, I made his kids cry. So it's a happy ending. All right, you guys were fantastic. Thank you.